is today's um, over the board game, and it's it's an unrated game, so it's um, it doesn't impact on the rating type thing. Just wanted to get some practice in here. So we push through with e4 as we do. Opponent came through with the c5. Developed the knight. This is all pretty straightforward. Captured and developed the bishop. Captured the knight and then just blocking off the bishop like we do, you know. So it's got no legs really on that one. So we bring the bishop up now, supporting the pawn, looking to go and get castled. So develop the knight and bring the knight up to a useful position, maybe potentially eyeing this type of square up. But what I didn't want was this and then them actually taking the knight because uh, we wanted our queen to come here to basically attack the bishop here. So we castled. And then they opened up, so they're already attacking and the x-ray and through to the knight. So now it's always for the b-pawn, as we know. So the rook is um, challenging the pawn. We bring the queen up, it is supporting the pawn. But in the grand scheme of things, if it kicks off and we do go for this, the queen is going to be up here, so they would end up within the pawn anyway. So we brought the rook supporting. All pretty straightforward stuff at this moment. And we capture... And we bring the queen up really just to sort of support the pawn in a sense, supporting the knight as well. Because like I said, I didn't really want to double the pawns at this stage. So if we were going to be pushing this pawn, then at least the queen would be able to take back. So now they're looking to challenge this area here. So I felt fairly comfortable with that situation. And looking to double up ourselves. So just supporting at this moment. Gage bar doesn't like it. It's fair, fair enough. And they brought the queen back, so now they've got like a triple dose on here, but they're going to have to manage attacking somehow, so game wasn't too worried about that. So now I'm deciding to mobilise the knight to potentially come and grab a rook, and at the expense of maybe developing the knight up and increasing the position on the board. So we attack the rooks. The rook doesn't really have any place to go. I mean, it could go here, but we've got to discover check with the bishop. It can go there and still go and discover check with the bishop. So that felt fairly good. And at this point, I thought, yes, this is the this is the point where we're going to get the advantage. So we grab the pawn. Because obviously the bishop is actually um, attacking the rook. And if they decided to say if they move this rook. You know, maybe to here to attack the knight, that would be for free. So there was lots of woods, coulds type situation. And the opponent brought the rook back. And I thought, oh my gosh, they've defended. How have they defended that? I wanted to get it for free. So I was more to set on actually doing this knight move. I did really consider pushing the pawn onto the knight. I thought that was probably a better way to go because... Um, our queen doesn't have any protection on it. So I'm thinking I'm losing tempo now. And are they going to get our knight for free somehow? So it's funny when you're seeing it over the board. Looking at it now, it looks pretty straightforward. Because all I need to do was this. But I'm thinking if his rook comes and puts a um, check on our knight. Then he's going to have a 2 on war and the knight has to move, but it can't protect the queen. So they're going to get our queen for free. But that's not the case. So I should have just played this particular move. Nice and simple and straightforward. It's also attacking the knight. What was I worried about? I was worried about the knight actually coming here and attacking our queen. So then we would have to move, but the pawn is protecting the knight. So we would be able to come and attack here with our queen. So now the picture looks so clear. But because I was so more to set with this knight move here, it was it was kind of a waste of a move. Really, I wanted to take this, but I couldn't because obviously there. I should have just done this, but... Even then, they're going to get the knight. So they're getting the knight for free. 
even if you push that pawn. So why, what is it? Sh why is it showing that that's a benefit? I'm actually going to just touch onto it now. So obviously this is going to take, isn't it? If it does take though, we get a check on the king with our pawn. Or does the queen take? Queen takes with a check on the king. Oh, savage. Ah. Okay, so the capture, so at this point now we're kind of on the back foot. And we're trying. Before they did this move, I was like thinking, oh, we could push onto the knight here. And then we've got like a lovely check on the king here once the knight moves. But that didn't happen. And they put a check on our queen and, you know, I was considering taking, but I'm thinking, well, you know, I thought I'll try and be a bit fancy. It just didn't work out. So we put a check on the king and we pushed on to the knight, trying to get rid of the knight, maybe trying to squeeze something in. The queen's got nothing. I was really trying to plan to get here, but it's not fast enough. And then the queen comes down. And because they've got the bishop here, I have to take the queen off the board. So it's on the back foot from this point. And they found good position. And at the end of the day, my king couldn't move anywhere. Where well, it could, but I'm um, losing our big style. Um, never mind. We live to fight another day.